Aircraft carriers are big, okay? They kind of need to be. They literally carry planes. I mean, they're basically mobile cities now that I think about it, but no matter how big the biggest aircraft carrier you've ever seen is, we promise you there are bigger ones. These are the 20 largest and most powerful aircraft carriers in the world. Number 20, the Queen Elizabeth class, UK. The HMS Queen Elizabeth and the HMS Prince of Wales are important for the UK's armed power. They're part of the carrier strike groups. These are part of the Royal Navy. They can send air power anywhere in the world. These ships can carry the latest F-35B Lightning II as well as the Merlin and Wildcat planes. The F-35B fighter jet is totally awesome. This is because it can take off fast and land vertically. This trait gives the UK more options for its Air Force activities and lets them go further in combat range. The Queen Elizabeth class carriers are the largest ships in the Royal Navy. They are 280 meters long and weigh 65,000 metric tons. They have all kinds of modern tools. These permit them to perform a lot of different tasks. These carriers were constructed with the help of many suppliers from all over the UK, and this made the airplane industry in the UK grow. Building these ships has been a boost to the economy as well as the Navy. The Queen Elizabeth class carriers show how much the UK wants to maintain a strong and capable military force to its interests around the world. Now it's time for the strange topic. Let's pause exploring aircraft carriers that do exist to chat about one that will. This right here is a concept art for an in-development aircraft carrier from the United States military that will totally change the game because it'll be able to fly. Now, you might think, isn't that just the helicarrier from the first Avengers movie? But engineers and designers are inspired by fiction more often than you might think. It's a well-documented fact that tools such as Skype and Zoom only exist because developers were inspired by the visual telecommunication devices in the original 1960s Star Trek. So why can't the very same boffins bring something from the world of Marvel into the real world? If this flying helicarrier gets off the ground, both literally and metaphorically, it will totally reinvent what the American military is capable of and just might, in turn, totally change the face of war, for good or bad. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below using the hashtag StrangeTopic. Number 19, Admiral Kuznetsov, Russia. The most important ship in the Russian Navy is this big monster, the Admiral Kuznetsov. It is a Kuznetsov-class aircraft carrier, which basically means it's seriously big and strong. This well-armed ship is 305 meters long, 72 meters wide, and can carry 58,500 metric tons at full load. It can be used for a host of operations, including as an aircraft carrier. The Admiral Kuznetsov's landing deck is massive at 14,700 square meters. It can hold up to 33 fixed-wing planes and 12 helicopters, or probably a lot of wheat. These include fighters like the Sukhoi Su-33 and the Mikoyan MiG-29K, but not forgetting the Kamov KA-27 and the Kamov KA-27 PLO. The ship has room for 1,960 crew members, 626 members of the air group, and 40 flag officers. However, it hasn't all been plain sailing after a 70-ton crane fell on it during a refit in November 2018, claiming two people's lives and leaving a lot of damage the Admiral Kuznetsov had to get fixed up. Further upgrades began in June 2022. The Admiral Kuznetsov got some major press back when it was sent to the Mediterranean Sea in 2016 and 2017 to help the Syrian government in activities during the Syrian Civil War. Don't forget to like and subscribe or else we might just send an aircraft carrier to your doorstep. Number 18, Hainan, China. The Chinese People's Liberation Army Navy's first Type 075 amphibious attack ship, the Hainan, recently participated in a far sea drill in the West Pacific. The ship was ready for battle, which showed off the People's Liberation Army Navy's naval landing operations. 
which can be used for things like fighting terrorists and helping people in disaster situations. Experts have said that these drills show that China is always working to improve its naval power and readiness. But it's clear that it's making the U.S. feel the heat. The Hainan is a mighty piece of equipment. It's around 237 meters long and weighs about 40,000 metric tons. Its flexible design and ability to carry helicopters, armed vehicles, and hundreds of soldiers make it a key part of the People's Liberation Army Navy's ability to go on missions. The ship is named after Hainan Island. This is a popular vacation spot in the southernmost state of China. The island is super important to China's economic growth, most especially in the fields of tourism, agriculture, and energy. Number 17, Cavour, Italy. Did you know that the Cavour, the most important ship in the Italian Navy, was launched in 2004? This adaptable ship can perform fixed-wing vertical slash short takeoff and landing and helicopter air operations, command and control, and people and heavy vehicle transfers. With 2,800 square meters of garage space, this baby can hold up to 24 main battle tanks. Or, if you prefer, a large number of smaller vehicles. The ship even has ramps and lifts that can be used to load and unload planes and other things. At full combat strength, the Cavour can carry more than 30,000 tons. The Cavour was updated to handle 15 Lockheed Martin F-35B Lightning II jets, which will replace the Italian Navy's Harrier planes. This change improves the carrier's overall skills and makes it easier for Italy to project air power. The last interesting thing about the ship is that it is named after Camillo Benso, Count of Cavour, who was a key figure in bringing Italy together in the 1800s. Count Cavour's work was important in making Italy what it is today. Number 16, Nimitz Class, USA. The 10 aircraft carriers in the US Navy's Nimitz Class are powered by nuclear energy. That's right. These are nuclear ships. How crazy is that? In honor of Fleet Admiral Chester W. Nimitz, the name of the first ship in this class is also Chester W. Nimitz. These were once the biggest warships ever made. Fully loaded, they can carry more than 100,000 metric tons, and they are an impressive 333 meters long. Before 2017, when the United States ship Gerald R. Ford joined the US Navy, ships in the Nimitz class were the biggest of all time. The Nimitz-class carriers are driven by two A4W, advanced fourth generation Westinghouse pressurized water reactors, which turn four propeller shafts. This is different from other ship propulsion methods. They can move at 56 kilometers per hour and generate about 190 megawatts of power. They are powered by nuclear energy, and so these super ships can stay in service for a long time. In fact, more than 20 years of service is possible before they need to be refueled. They are planned to be in use for over 50 years. The Newport News Shipbuilding Company in Virginia built all 10 carriers in the Nimitz class, which were put into service between 1975 and 2009. During their time, these big carriers took part in lots of wars around the world. These included Operation Eagle Claw, the Gulf War, and tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. People often call the Nimitz class carriers floating cities because they're so big and have so many different types of facilities and powers. These carriers have a lot of room for aircraft and command centers, hospitals, and housing for thousands of people. Number 15, Chakri Narubet, Thailand. The Royal Thai Navy put the HTMS Chakri Narubet into service in 1997. It was modeled after a ship from the Spanish Navy called the Principe de Asturias. It was made by the Spanish shipyard Bathan and is the world's smallest aircraft carrier at the moment. Fighter planes and helicopters that can take off and land vertically are best adapted to this ship. In this clip, you can see an airplane taking off by ski jumping. This is how such a small carrier can operate and still be effective. At first, the ship used Sikorsky SH-60 Seahawk helicopters and ex-Spanish AV-8S Matador Harrier planes. Over the years, the Chakri Narubet has been sent on many missions to help people who have been affected by disasters. These missions included responding to the 2004 tsunami in the Indian Ocean. It also helped out with the floods in 2010 and 2011. At full capacity, the carrier weighs 11,486 tons and is 164.1 meters long between parallels and 182.65 meters long overall. It is 22.5 meters wide at the shoreline and a chunky 30.5 meters wide at its widest point. The ship's company is made up of 62 officers, 393 sailors, and 146 airmen. The ship can carry up to 675 more people 
most of whom are from the Royal Thai Marine Corps. The HTMS Chakri Narubet is the only aircraft carrier that the Royal Thai Navy runs. As a sign of national pride, this big ship holds a place in the hearts of all Thai people. Number 14, Juan Carlos I, King of Spain. The former King of Spain, Juan Carlos I, is honored by the name of an amphibious attack ship slash aircraft carrier in the Spanish Navy. As you might have guessed, it's called Juan Carlos I and helps Spanish Marines move around and also moves ground troops strategically. The aircraft carrier Principe de Asturias was replaced by this ship. The length of the ship is 231 meters and its width 32 meters. It weighs 26,000 tons and can travel at 28 kilometers per hour for as much as 16,000 kilometers. Juan Carlos I is made to carry up to 46 Leopard 2E tanks and 913 troops. There are 261 people in the ship's company and 172 people in the air wing. It also has a lot of sensors and processing tools like Lanza and air search and precision approach radar airplane landing. The ship has four 20 millimeter guns, two military basic point defense missile systems and four 12.7 millimeter machine guns. Juan Carlos I holds planes like the McDonnell Douglas AV-8B Harrier II, the Chinook, the Sea King, and the NH Industries NH-90. During the Yemeni crisis in 2015, Juan Carlos I helped get people to safety. This showed how versatile and capable it was as a multi-purpose vehicle. Number 13, Fujian, China. The Fujian, China's third aircraft carrier, has a more advanced launch system called Catapult Assisted Takeoff But Arrested Recovery, aka Kato Bar. This is different from the short takeoff barrier arrested recovery, aka Stobar systems used on China's first two carriers, which were like ski jumps. The Kato Bar system makes it possible for heavy and bigger fixed wing planes to take off. Also, the catapults on the Fujian are driven by an electric system like the one the US Navy ships in the Gerald R. Ford class. This method is better than the usual catapults that are powered by steam. The Fujian can carry about 80,000 metric tons. This is more than the Liaoning and the Shandong, which came before it. The Fujian carrier launched on June 17, 2022. Its name has caught the attention of Western media because the province from which it gets its name is close to Taiwan. But in truth, the Chinese People's Liberation Army Navy has some basic rules about how to name its ships. For example, all of its aircraft carriers are named after Chinese regions. This has long been the case for Chinese aircraft carriers, and it's no different for the Liaoning and Shandong, which were both named after places in China. So naming the aircraft carrier after the state of Fujian is in line with how Chinese military ships are usually named. Adding the Fujian to China's growing line of aircraft carriers shows what China is about right now. It demonstrates that the country wants to build a navy that can operate anywhere in the world. China's efforts to get more advanced carrier technology and skills show its growing power and geopolitical goals in Asia Pacific and beyond. Number 12, TCG Anadolu, Turkey. The TCG Anadolu, the Turkish Naval Force's biggest ship, has just been put into service. This amphibious attack ship can carry drones and helicopters, but what makes it stand out is that it can also run fixed wing drones that can do battle, which is a first in the aircraft world. With the TCG Anadolu's ability to do many different things, Turkey's military power is increased and it can take on more tasks. The ship's use of drones for combat tasks gives it more options and a better idea of what's going on in modern battle. The TCG Anadolu is the first Turkish Navy ship to have fixed wing drones that can be used in battle. This shows that Turkey is putting more emphasis on advanced aerial skills and wants to be a leader in the area when it comes to drone technology and use. The ship's launch shows that Turkey is committed to improving its military forces and adapting to the changing ways that wars are fought today. Number 11, Giuseppe Garibaldi, Italy. The anti-submarine warfare aircraft carrier Giuseppe Garibaldi of the Italian Navy is well known for its size and weight. After a major upgrade in 2003, Harrier's weight went up by a lot to 14,150 tons. It is now 180.2 meters long, has a beam of 33.4 meters, and draws 8.2 meters. Four General Electric slash AVO LM2500 gas turbines that can produce 60,400 kilowatts 
and six diesel engine generators from Grandi Motori Trieste, each with an Ansaldo Electrital electric generator, power the Garibaldi's powerful propulsion system. This method makes it possible for the ship to go faster than 30 knots. The Giuseppe Garibaldi can hold up to 830 people, including 550 crew members, up to 180 people from the fleet air arm, and up to 100 people from the C4 team. The Garibaldi is a modern carrier with strong systems for detecting and interpreting information. These include radar systems from Selenia and Hughes for long-range tracking and searching the surface, ship sonar from Raytheon, and tools for electronic warfare like a jamming system and decoy missiles. Giuseppe Garibaldi was another Italian hero, like Cavour we mentioned earlier, who helped bring the country together in the 1800s. The ship is named after him. The ship's name honors what he did for Italy's past and shows how strong the Italian Navy is. Number 10, INS Vikrant, India. India and the Indian Navy have really leveled up with the launch of the Indian naval ship, INS Vikrant. It was made by the Cochin Shipyard Limited, which the Navy's Warship Design Bureau hired. It is the biggest and most difficult warship India has ever made. Even though it is big and heavy, the Vikrant can go up to 52 kilometers per hour and has a range of around 13,890 kilometers. It has a fleet of MiG-29K planes, Kamov-31 early warning planes, and MH-60R helicopters that can be used for many different tasks. It also has current attack and defense systems and radars for monitoring and controlling fire. The name Vikrant is a reference in India's past because it was given to the country's first aircraft carrier, the INS Vikrant. This ship was used by the Indian Navy from 1961 to 1997. The new Indian naval ship Vikrant will carry on the work of the old one. This shows that India wants to get better at being a sea power and build its own defense equipment. Number nine, the Prince of Wales. You the UK built the amazing surface warship, HMS Prince of Wales, which is also called R09. Its landing deck is a massive 70 meters wide and 280 meters long. It can store food that will last for 45 days and is very good at getting things done. It is considered one of the best carriers in the world. The ship can hold up to 1,600 people with planes on board, and its worker complement starts at about 700 people. It has a great potential for planes because it can hold 36 F-35B Lightning II attack jets and four Merlin helicopters. The Royal Navy has never built a ship bigger than the HMS Prince of Wales. It is a Queen Elizabeth-class aircraft carrier. It is a key part of making it easier for the UK to spread its power around the world and strengthen its military position. The Royal Navy has taken a big step forward by building these ships. Did you know that the Royal Navy is the world's oldest naval force still in existence? It began in the 1600s. It has also changed a lot about how ships do battle. For instance, the HMS Dreadnought from 1906 was the first modern cruiser with only big guns and steam engines. One interesting Royal Navy tradition is the toast of the day. Every day, a different drink is made to honor a different military theme, historical event, or person. Number eight, Liaoning, China. The Chinese People's Liberation Army Navy's aircraft carrier, Liaoning, recently took place in regular drills in the West Pacific. This powerful ship was bought from the Soviet Union in 1998 and has been updated and fixed up a lot since then. Carrier Group crossed the Miyako Strait with a force of Type 055 10,000 ton class big destroyers to show how strong it was in the area. The People's Liberation Army fleet stayed focused on actual combat-oriented drills beyond the first island chain, with the goal of improving its ability to protect national sovereignty, territorial integrity, and development interests. Since China's Navy started using it in 2012, the Liaoning has been a major player. It is one of the most modern carriers in the region. The Liaoning has become a sign of China's growing military power in the Asia-Pacific region. Its location in the West Pacific shows how much China wants to protect its national interests, make sure its people are safe, and show off its power beyond its bounds. The Liaoning is likely to stay a key player because it has a good track record and top-line technical prowess. Number 7. INS Virat, India The Indian naval ship Virat was an aircraft carrier from the Centaur class. Its name comes from the Sanskrit word meaning giant. It was operated by the Indian Navy. However, it started out in the Royal Navy in 1959 as HMS Hermes. 
In 1984, it was taken out of service, and in 1987, it was then sold to India. On May 12, 1987, the aircraft carrier became the leader of the Indian Navy fleet. For almost 30 years, it was a key part of many military drills, missions to help people, and battles. With a length of 226.5 meters and a weight of about 28,700 tons, it could take about 30 planes and helicopters such as Sea Harriers, Sea Kings, and Chetaks. The Indian naval ship Virat has been in service for 30 years and has become a well-known symbol of Indian military power. After it was taken out of service in 2017, people have discussed turning it into a museum or a high-end hotel. However, the Virat's future is still unclear because of various logistics problems. No matter what, this will always be known as an important part of India's naval past and for what it did to improve the country's sea power. I hereby declare. Number six, Charles de Gaulle, France. The 38,000 ton aircraft carrier Charles de Gaulle was built at the Directorate of Naval Construction Brest Military Shipyard in Brittany, France. It is driven by nuclear power and uses nuclear weapons. It was put into service May 1994, but wasn't named until September 2000. That took a long time. In January 1999, the carrier went through a lot of sea trials, which led to changes like extending the landing deck by 4.4 meters to make room for the E-2C Hawkeye planes and make sure the deck cleared quickly. The Charles de Gaulle is a modern ship that can help with a wide range of flight activities. Its landing deck is about 261.5 meters long. This gives plenty of room for both fixed wing planes and helicopters. The carrier's air wing is usually made up of Rafale M multi-role fighters, E-2C Hawkeye aerial early warning planes, and different helicopters. This is France's most awesome aircraft carrier. It is the only one in the French fleet that runs on nuclear power. Because it has a nuclear power system, it can go on very long voyages. The ship is named after Charles de Gaulle. He was a well-known French military and government leader who was president of France from 1959 to 1969. Number five, INS Vikramaditya, India. This baby is the Indian Navy's aircraft carrier, the Indian naval ship Vikramaditya. And we can safely say, this is an amazing ship. It's basically a floating airport. Its total length is about 284 meters, which is the same as three football fields put together. Its widest point is around 60 meters. And from the bottom to the highest point, it's about 20 stories tall. It weighs 44,500 tons, which is a lot. It has a total of 22 decks that hold different devices for running the ship and helping it operate in military situations. The Indian naval ship Vikramaditya has a long history. It used to be called the Baku when it was a Soviet ship. The Soviet Navy started using it in 1987. Before the Indian Navy put it to use in 2013, it went through a lot of upgrades and fixes, including a rebuilding program in India. In the old Indian language Sanskrit, Vikramaditya has a special meaning. It means brave as the sun. It was given to the carrier as a way to honor Vikramaditya, a famous ruler of the past. Number four, the USS Theodore Roosevelt, CVN-71. The United States ship Teddy Roosevelt is a world-class nuclear-powered carrier from the U.S. Navy. It's part of the Nimitz class and is named after Theodore Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt was the 26th president of the United States of America, and the ship's name is a reminder of how important he was to the growth of a U.S. naval power. The USS Theodore Roosevelt has the nickname Rough Rider, which was the volunteer horse unit that President Roosevelt led during the Spanish-American War. During the Gulf War in 1991, the ship saw its first deployment, it's always respected on the high seas because it is about 332 meters long and weighs more than 100,000 tons. You wouldn't want to mess with this ship. Two advanced fourth generation Westinghouse A4W nuclear reactors drive the carrier. This lets it move quickly and keep going for long periods of time. The United States Navy was founded in 1775. It is now the world's biggest and most powerful Navy. Here's a fun fact. The United States Ship Constitution, which is also called Old Ironsides, is the oldest warship that is still in service today. It was built in 1797 and saw combat for the first time in 1812. It played a major role in the War of 1812 and is now enjoying life as a museum ship in Boston. Number three, Shandong, China. 
The amazing aircraft carrier Shandong, which China built in 2019, has been getting a lot of attention lately. This ship is bigger than a football field and weighs more than 60,000 tons. It can launch 32 J-15 heavyweight fighter jets and backup helicopters and drones. The Shandong is being watched over by a strong strike group that includes two destroyers from the Type 055 and Type 052D classes, two frigates from the Type 054A class, and maybe even a submarine. Also, two complete resupply ships from the Type 901 and Type 903 classes are with the group, which lets them stay at sea for longer. The Shandong's launch shows that China is getting better at building ships and making defense technology. It's the first aircraft carrier that was completely designed and built in China. It's a key part of China's efforts to increase its maritime presence and show its power in the area. Number two, the USS Kitty Hawk, CV-63. The United States ship Kitty Hawk was a supercarrier and the second ship to have that name. It was first called an attack aircraft carrier, CV-A-63, but on April 29, 1973, it was changed to a multi-purpose aircraft carrier, CV-63. Starting in August 1998, Kitty Hawk's home port was in Yokosuka, Japan. It took over for the U.S. ship independence and served as the Navy's only forward-deployed aircraft carrier. After taking part in RIM of the Pacific Exercise, RIMPAC, 2008, Kitty Hawk left Japan for the last time in the middle of 2008. After this, it headed on to San Diego to meet up with the United States ship George Washington. The George Washington took the place of the Kitty Hawk in Japan, so the two ships switched places. The Kitty Hawk was taken out of service on May 12, 2009. It was put into storage at Bremerton, Washington. On October 20, 2017, it was taken off the Navy's list of active ships. The Kitty Hawk was sold to international ship breaking of Brownsville, Texas for just one cent to be broken up into parts. That sounds like a bargain. However, dismantling and reusing military ships like Kitty Hawk are important steps that make sure materials are thrown away and reused correct and that environmental rules are followed. And we know Texas is big on that. Number one, USS Gerald R. Ford. The United States ship Gerald R. Ford class is a modern type of aircraft carrier that the US uses. Gerald R. Ford, the 38th President of the United States, is the guy honored by this group of carriers. The Nimitz-class carriers will be replaced by these ships. The Gerald R. Ford-class warships are some of the largest ever made. They weigh around 100,000 metric tons when they're full. In May 2017, CVN-78, Carrier Vessel Nuclear Powered 78, the first ship of this class, was given to the Navy. It has a new nuclear power plant, a better flight deck with faster takeoffs, and a rebuilt island layout. These carriers have high-tech equipment and systems that can help with current naval activities. They now have better ways to launch and land planes, more space to store flight fuel, and more efficient ways to make electricity. The number of team members and the amount of work they have to do is also less with the new plan. This makes things run more smoothly. The United States ship Gerald R. Ford is the first new plan for a U.S. Navy aircraft carrier since the Nimitz-class ships came out in the 1970s. It's a big step forward in technology and power, with features like electric plane launch systems and advanced tracking systems. It is the first U.S. Navy aircraft carrier to be built completely using computer models and new technology. This means that it'll be easier to build and won't take as long. The Ford-class ships will probably lead the carrier strike groups of the U.S. Navy for many years to come. Which aircraft carrier is the most interesting to you, and why? And what do you think the role of aircraft carriers will be in future wars and in keeping the world safe? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now.